All right, I want to first thank the My Machine team, especially Pete Grimompri, for having me here tonight and for allowing me to experience firsthand the exhibition with the students' dream machines here yesterday. It's been lovely getting to see My Machine in action for the first time while I've been here. And tonight I'll be speaking with you about connections between My Machine and more general maker-centered learning ideas that come from my colleagues at Harvard University. So as Pete mentioned, I had the pleasure of co-authoring a chapter in the new My Machine book with my partners Edward Clapp and Amy Kamarainen. So tonight I'm going to share with you just one of the connections that we explored in the chapter between My Machine and the work we do at Project Zero, which is a research center that is part of the Harvard Graduate School of Education. And it's made up of many research projects that explore quality teaching and learning in a variety of environments. And one of those research projects is Agency by Design, which was started in 2012 and explores the promises, practices, and pedagogies of maker-centered learning experiences, of which my machine is one. The most valuable benefit of maker-centered learning is the development of an I can do that perspective, a shift in students' mindsets from being a user to being a producer or creator. And out of this research comes the concept of maker empowerment, which is a sensitivity to the designed nature of things with an inclination as well as an ability to shape one's world through building, tinkering, designing, and redesigning. And the type of student agency that's supported by My Machine resonates quite well with this idea of maker empowerment. Central to having a sense of maker empowerment is the ability to see the world as changeable. As the students participating in My Machine probably understand, if you think that the world can be changed, then you can become the maker of your experiences, not just a passive consumer. But in order to see the world as changeable, you must first understand the designed nature of the world. In other words, you have to have a sensitivity to design. And this means being attuned to those designed elements of objects and systems, which have all been created over time by individuals as well as groups of people. Maker-centered learning, as well as one of my broader areas of interest, which is object-based learning, is built on experiential, physical engagement. It's learning that is embodied. So I'd like to invite you to actively engage with these ideas for a moment. Put your hand in your pocket or in your bag and find an object. Go ahead. Look at it and feel it. We're going to spend some time with it. <laughs> Consider the following questions. What are its parts? What is it made out of? Then consider what perspectives you could look at it from. Who has been involved in this object? Who created it? Who's used it? What different disciplines or subject areas may be connected to it? Finally, consider how you are involved with it. What experiences or preferences do you have that relate to this object? I'd like you to take a minute and turn to a person near you at your table right now and talk with each other about these prompts on the screen as you reflect on your object. So take a few minutes to do that. This is participatory.
All right, you may want to start wrapping up your conversations. All right, let's come back together. Thank you for indulging me in that activity. I hope it gave you a little bit of a glimpse of the kind of discussions and explorations that you can have when you start to think and look deeply about a physical object. We are constantly surrounded with objects, but we rarely take the time to think about their parts, their purposes, their origins, and their connections. So you want to develop a sensitivity to design. So you see those sort of things. How does that happen? According to the Agency by Design research, three integrated maker capacities support having a sensitivity to design. Looking closely, exploring complexity, and finding opportunity. Looking closely involves carefully observing objects and systems to notice their nuances and details. Exploring complexity involves investigating the interactions between the parts and people involved in objects or systems, including the values, motivations, and priorities of the people involved. Finding opportunity builds on close observations and explorations of complexity to surface the potential for designing and redesigning. These three integrated maker capacities contribute to a sensitivity to design and are at the heart of maker-centered learning experiences. And they also seem to be embodied in all of the project phases of My Machine. Let's consider each capacity and what it can look like in practice. Although the three maker capacities are not ordered in a linear progression, I think it makes sense to start with looking closely, since that can naturally lead into the other maker capacities. So take, for example, a class of secondary students, a group who uses computers probably every day. But few students understand the parts of a computer. They may look at a screen, perhaps type on a keyboard, but that's generally all of the interaction they may have with it. So when something doesn't seem to be working properly, many aren't sure how to address it and immediately turn to an adult for a fix. A teacher in Pittsburgh used close looking to help her teenage students overcome their lack of knowledge and even their fear of these mysterious yet common electronics. She had them look closely at computers, both inside and out, having them draw and name different parts. In doing so, they built a greater understanding of the equipment they regularly use and also developed confidence addressing and even just discussing issues that they had. Looking closely seems to be found throughout the students' experiences participating in My Machine as well. I expect that the primary school children who are inventing the dream machines are looking closely at the world around them to see things that could be improved. The university students must look closely, both in a literal sense, at the models and the sketches that the primary students give them, but also in a more figurative sense, at the needs of the project in relation to the abilities and resources of the team. Finally, the secondary students must look closely at the previous sets of designs to accurately build the prototype. Close looking seems key to a faithful and effective concept realization from the idea to the finished product. And looking closely is an important skill across contemporary society, as the items, people, and systems that we encounter are incredibly complicated and layered. It's often impossible to fully understand something from simply a brief examination. Only by looking closely can we uncover a more complete picture of what's happening, who someone is, or what something means. The next capacity in the framework is exploring complexity. Close looking tends to naturally highlight inherent complexities, which can then be purposefully explored. Focusing on even just one object can provide rich opportunities to engage with complexity. For example, a middle school teacher in Washington, DC had students in a class on the brain and neuroscience take apart a bicycle to explore the complex interactions between the bike's parts and systems. The physical bicycle was used as a metaphor to explore complicated interrelationships 
like those involved in cognition, and the activity allowed the students to practice systems thinking. When identifying a problem to solve, the primary school children in my machine are given an opportunity to explore complexity in the systems around them, their home, school, hobbies, relationships. The higher education students must then consider the complexity in the experiences of the young dreamer or dreamers and in applicable design issues. In moving from a concept to a prototype, the secondary students then take into account the complexities related to things like physical materials and construction methods. Exploring complexity is an important skill to foster because we live in an inherently complex environment. Trying to simplify objects, events, people, or ideas can lead to misunderstandings and misinformation. An ability to explore complexity is needed to be able to appreciate and honor the nuanced richness of the world within and around us. The final capacity is finding opportunity. To find opportunity is to notice the potential for something to be changed and have an inclination to make that change. A classroom itself is something that can be changed with multiple parts and patterns that can be observed, evaluated, and improved. Multiple classes in the Agency by Design project have engaged students in redesigning their learning environments, their classrooms, by helping the students find opportunities to make their classroom better. For example, one primary school class found opportunities to make their class a better space at encouraging movement after noticing a problem with how much time everyone was spending sitting down. The students came up with ways to make their classroom more conducive to regular movement and activity, and actually made changes to the physical space. Opportunities to shape the world often feel limited, especially to youth whose activities are generally dictated by the adults in their lives. Simply inviting students to imagine their world in a different way, a better way, asks them to find opportunities to creatively improve their lives through the ideas, designs, and prototypes in my machine. Finding opportunity is really the key to making change in the world at large. Most, if not all of us, envision a better future for ourselves, our society, and our planet. To be able to realize those transformations that we want to see, we must find opportunity to become agents of positive change. While looking closely, exploring complexity, and finding opportunity are all important capacities that are fostered by maker-centered learning experiences like My Machine, there are still some unanswered questions and challenges in this new area of focus that educators and researchers are still examining. One of these questions is the issue of transfer. Maker-centered programming engages students in close-looking exploration of complexity and discoveries of opportunity around the focus object or system, like a dream machine. But are these capacities then used in other contexts? Do students begin looking closely, exploring complexity, and finding opportunity in different school areas and in other aspects of their lives? And are there intentional practices that could encourage such transfer? In addition to transfer, documentation is another ongoing challenge when we think about any kind of learning experience. At Project Zero, we believe that thinking and learning are visible, and nowhere is that more apparent than in maker-centered learning experiences like My Machine. But how is that learning then documented and perhaps assessed to best allow educators, families, and the students themselves to really reflect critically on both the processes and the products of their learning? This is especially puzzling in today's digital world, where online privacy for minors is yet another consideration when we think about how and where to document learning experiences. Documentation and transfer are just two of the important areas of maker-centered learning that we as a field are still exploring. And I invite the schools and partners involved in My Machine to keep thinking about these issues going forward. To conclude, my Harvard colleagues and I see a lot of resonance between the three maker capacities identified in the Agency by Design research and the student experiences across my machine. 
looking closely, exploring complexity, and finding opportunity are all characteristics of a maker-centered learning program like My Machine, and they are powerful ways for students and for all of us to develop a sensitivity to design that will allow us to more fully engage with the increasingly complicated, interconnected, yet object-rich world around us. The systems, objects, and practices that we find ourselves surrounded by have been designed, which means they can be redesigned and improved to better accommodate our current needs and overcome pressing world issues. It's my hope that maker-centered learning experiences like those in my machine will provide youth with the sensitivity to design needed to remake our world for the better. Thank you.